this is the time in our service that uh, we believers get to celebrate communion together. Uh, we want to remember and rejoice in the saving work of Jesus through his death and resurrection. So our passage this morning is 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 3 through 5. It's 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 3 through 5. So uh, before we read that together, uh, I would like to pray and thank God for this time that we have together this morning. Father, thank you for your perfect provision for your children. We know that without you, we would be living in this world without hope and without the inheritance of heaven. Your word is truth, and your word brings assurance and peace and joy to all believers. We thank you for your saving grace. In Jesus' name, amen. <clears throat> so let's read together 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 3 through 5. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to his great mercy has caused us to be born again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, to obtain an inheritance which is imperishable and undefiled and will not fade away, reserved in heaven for you, who are protected by the power of God through faith, for a salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. So whenever I read this passage, it always brings joy to my heart. And I hope it will do the same for you this morning. The primary theme of these three verses is uh, the inheritance reserved in heaven for believers. Peter is writing to uh, believers who are residing in a country that is known today as Turkey. They are considered to be strangers and foreigners in this land. They are being persecuted by an unbelieving hostile world. They are most likely very poor and have very limited resources. So Peter wants to comfort them by urging them not to dwell on their existing circumstances, but to think about their future, which is the inheritance of heaven promised to them by God. So let's look at verse 3 uh, to see how we qualify for our inheritance. So Peter, Peter starts verse 3 with the word blessed, which means praise. Peter is saying, praise be to God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. It is a call to worship the Lord God who has promised believers eternal joy and blessing in the future. God is to be blessed and praised for his saving work. Also, please notice how Peter personalized his description of Christ by using the word the, the pronoun our. Jesus is our Lord and Savior. He died for our sins. Next in verse 3, we see that why we were saved. God, who according to his great mercy, has caused us to be born again. God caused us to be born again. We had nothing to do with it. It was God's choice to save us, and we have come to know and understand what a great joy and privilege it is to be the object of God's mercy and his grace. We were saved to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Living hope is eternal life and is secured by the resurrection of Jesus Christ. So what does our inheritance look like? Our inheritance is reserved in heaven for us. And no one knows exactly what that's going to look like, or what that will look like. But what we do know is what God's word tells us in verse 4. To obtain an inheritance which is imperishable 
and undefiled will not fade away reserved in heaven for you. So we see the descriptive, wor descriptive words in this verse are imperishable, undefiled, not fade away, and reserved. Our inheritance is in Christ, and it is not subject to corruption or decay. It will not fall apart. Nothing on this earth is perfect. Everything is flawed in some way or another. But our inheritance is perfect in Christ. Not only is it perfect, but it will never fade away. Our inheritance in Christ is reserved for us in heaven. It is kept for us, and God's word gives us that guarantee. If you look at Ephesians, you don't have to go there. Ephesians 1, 13 and 14, it says, In him you also... When you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and believed in him, were sealed with the promised Holy Spirit, who is the guarantee of our inheritance until we acquire possession of it to the praise of his glory. So finally, in 1 Peter 1.5, it tells us how secure our inheritance is. It is protected by the power of God through faith. Consider this, that your inheritance, believer, is protected by God who is all-powerful, all-knowing, present everywhere, and sovereign over all things. That's quite an insurance policy. There is no better insurance than this. In verse 5, we see that our inheritance is protected by the power of God through faith. Please remember what is stated in our passage. You must be born again to obtain the inheritance of heaven. You must believe that the only way to heaven is through faith in Jesus' death and his resurrection for the forgiveness of sins. He must be your Lord and Savior. Anything else will cause you to experience God's wrath and the torment of hell. In a minute, the men will serve us the elements to celebrate our relationship with Christ. <clears throat> Believers, please examine yourself and rejoice in our risen Savior. Rejoice in the fact that you know him and that he loves you. If you do not know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, we ask that you let the elements pass you by. This is a time for believers to remember the work of Christ and what he did on their behalf. However, please do not hesitate to talk with someone here at Grace Bible Church about what it means to be a follower of Jesus Christ. In fact, we beg you to be reconciled to him. Jesus himself says, come to me, all who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. I am gentle and humble in heart. This is the kind of Savior that he is. He is gentle and humble in heart. And I pray that today would be your day. Of salvation. Men, please come in service. Um, let's celebrate our inheritance in Christ together. Please take communion on your own when you're ready. And I will be back in a few, in a few minutes to close this time in prayer. <clears throat>